Hey guys, and welcome to Functional Print Friday, and welcome back to the shop. So we're over here today at the milling machine, and there's a problem that I'd like to solve on this machine. Now, this is a milling vise, and this is mounted to the table, so it moves back and forth with the table. And for most milling jobs, you're clamping your workpiece in this vise here. The problem is, I often go from a fairly large workpiece, or a workpiece oriented in this direction, to something really small, like maybe I want to clamp this guy in here. Well, now the problem is, i got to close this vise all the way. No big deal, right? I mean, they give us a handle for that. The problem is, it's um, yeah, it's a little too hard to turn like this. Like it just, at least with one hand, I can kind of do it with two hands, and this is what I generally end up doing. You can't swing it all the way around this way because it hits this handle uh, down here. I angled the camera down a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. We're hitting this handle here, and even if we weren't hitting this, we'd actually hit this wheel here unless we angle part way out. Um, and it's awkward to do that. So I end up doing this and it takes a while. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to make a speed handle for this. And speed handles for milling machine vices are something that's commercially available, uh, but I can't find one for a machine this small for two reasons. Number one, this is a 14 millimeter hex. The smallest handles I found are for 15 millimeter hexes. Most of them are for three quarter uh, hex or for three quarter square drive. But even if I could find one that actually had a 14 millimeter hex, the problem is even the speed handles are too long. Uh, they'd actually hit this wheel down here. So what I'm thinking we'll do is let's just make one. All right, I mentioned this hex here is 14 millimeters. I'm just gonna check it again. Yeah, it is just under 14 millimeters, if I recall, in places here where the paint is thicker. Uh, it's just over 14 millimeters. So we have that measurement. Um, I wanna get a rough idea of how much distance we have between this center and this wheel down here because we have to miss this. And I guess we still wanna leave ourselves a little bit of clearance. So maybe we'll start around maybe 70, somewhere around there in length because we're still gonna need some leverage here. Again, we can't turn this by hand. We can in the, in the, uh, the free play area, but once we start trying to move that vice jaw, it tightens up to where we can't turn this by hand. So we don't wanna be too close. We need some amount of leverage to spin this guy around, but we can't go too far either. All right, that's all the measurements I'm gonna take right now because as I've mentioned in previous videos, I really like to do just a rough prototype first uh, to discover all the things that I'm not thinking of just looking at this without anything on it. All right, and here's what I came up with for this. And again, just keeping it really simple here at first, just to ensure we have the right size here for the hex and that we have the right length overall here. So, all right, I'm gonna get this printed out and let's see how it fits. All right, before I hit print, I did just wanna share some slicing basics with you guys for functional parts like this where you need a lot of strength. It's really important that you set your wall loops up to a high enough number to give you the strength that you need. Wall loops is a lot more important than the actual percentage of infill you have for functional parts like this. So I've got it set to six. That should be more than enough for this part. We could probably do it with three or four. Um, six is overkill, but hey, I mean, it's a machine making it. It's not like we gotta stand there and draw the extra lines. So. I'm gonna print it with six, and I went with gyroid infill as well. I, I personally think that the gyroid infill tends to be the strongest for parts like this. It takes a little longer to print, but the one downside with grid infill, which is the default in so many different slicers is, it's kind of a flawed infill by default because the nozzle ends up rubbing on it because the layers kind of stack over each other when they cross. So if, you have, if you've ever had that issue where you hear like the nozzle grinding against your part when you're printing, um, switch to gyroid. Print's a little slower, but it's so much nicer. All right, our first test print is done. Let's see if it fits on the hex. Yeah, actually, it fits really good. It's a little hard to get started. Probably help if we put a bevel on this so we don't have to line it up exactly perfectly. But the fit's really nice. I don't think I'm gonna change that at all. Um, it is. Yeah, I don't think we could go any more snug. There is barely any play in there, but it still slides freely. We're hitting, so the this actually hits against this. The uh, This apparently the back of the hex is further this way than the front edge of the vise. So we'll have to maybe add 
uh, like a ridge or something up here to keep this away. Yeah, if we have, if we target the our actual speed wrench here being more or less flush with the front of our hex, that should give us clearance room uh, back here. All right, even just the experience of spinning it like that with my finger is so much better than trying to use this. I could just stop here. We've already half solved the problem, but you guys know I'm not gonna stop. We're gonna, we're gonna go all the way with this. But I do need to make some design changes on this. We need to add that shoulder uh, to keep from hitting the, uh, the vise as we come around. And we need to shorten this guy up Maybe by like, I don't know, 15, 20 millimeters. And we need to figure out how we're actually gonna do the part of the handle that we hold on to. So like this part here. It doesn't need to be that big. Um, and we can't just, we can't just add one there and let our hand spin on it because I don't think it's gonna have the strength. So the way that we're using the wrench, the layer lines are working out just fine for us because it's strongest in that way. Like I, a 14 millimeter hex 3D printed with a bunch of walls here, I actually don't think I'm strong enough to strip that guy out and it's probably gonna last quite a long time. But if we just added a handle vertically coming off of this, that's gonna snap off pretty easy. I mean, you know, I might get a couple uses out of it before it snaps off, but it's ultimately gonna snap off. So we're gonna have to figure out another way to do that handle. I have some ideas, but I need to think it through a little bit more. So let me go make those changes and I'll bring you guys back. All right, and here's the updated design that I came up with. And I went ahead and I shortened up our original test piece. I beveled uh, both sides here, front and back. We added that raised section here to get us away from the front edge of the vise. I put a nice round over on that. And if you're wondering what's going on over here in our bore, well, I opened up that bore to 16 millimeters. And if I hide this, what that is, that's actually a stack of bearings. Those are six by 16 bearings. They're five millimeters thick each. So the total stack up should be right on the money of 15 millimeters. And if you're wondering why I went with bearings, well, we get a ton of surface area here. We'll press these guys into the plastic part. And to solve the problem of how we're going to make the actual handle piece without the weakness of the layer lines creating an issue for us, well, I kind of cheated. If I unhide everything here, you can see I designed a handle. And the reason that it is this color is because I want to make that part out of aluminum. I think that's going to be a nice contrasting look and it should spin really nice uh, down the inside of those three bearings. So, all right, let me get this piece printed up and we'll see how everything fits. All right, that piece finished and it looks really good. Came out super smooth and it's amazing how just adding a couple bevels and roundovers really gives a part sort of a finished look. So, let's see if it fits. Yeah, it's definitely easier to line up with that bevel on there. The fit is still as good as the original one. And our shoulder is keeping us away from the vise. We have clearance back here now. Let's see if I could spin this with my pinky. Yeah, I can spin that with my pinky, no problem. So I think we have plenty of leverage even with the, uh, the design shortened a little bit. All right, let me find a piece of aluminum stock and let's get started on the handle.
All right, guys, the lathe work is done, and I think our handle is ready to go. I hit all the dimensions pretty much dead on, and um, surface finish even looks pretty good on this. So this is the part back here that we're going to obviously hold on to with our thumb and fingers to spin this guy. Uh, this, uh, this taper comes down to basically the same diameter of the bearing. We have a small shoulder here so that this handle actually rides on the inner race of the bearing because we don't want this rubbing against the outer race because that's stationary. This inner race is what's going to turn. So if I put the bearing on here, you'll see we have a little bit of a gap there so that this handle is riding on that inner race of the bearing. And if I put the other two on here, you can see that our snap ring groove is just in the right spot there at the end so that after these bearings are pressed into our part, and we put this handle in, we put the snap ring in, we should be good to go. So I guess let's try, let's try pressing these bearings in. All right, if you guess we're going over to the Arbor Press, give yourself a pat on the back. And what I'm realizing here is we're actually gonna have a really hard time pressing this in straight because our bore is pretty tight. If only I had some way of keeping this aligned while I was trying to press it in. Yeah, I 3D printed one. All right, they pressed in really nice. We're flush on both sides, and the amount of pressure that it took to put these in, I'd say, was right on the money. I wouldn't want less because I'd be afraid they might spin and work loose over time, and I wouldn't want any more pressure because I'd be afraid that we might split that bore. But uh, I think we're right on the money, so let's try putting the handle in. All right, we got our trusty snap ring pliers and our tiny M6 snap ring. And let's see if our handle fits in. We want to go in from this side. Yep, nice slip fit. Ooh, that feels so nice in those bearings. And hopefully these bearings are nice and tight in here against each other because that snap ring groove, uh, I tested it with the three bearings just stacked on here, not in the handle. So let's see if we can get that on there. I hate these tiny snap rings. I'm going to give this a 50-50 chance of going on here. 50% chance it goes on, 50% chance I spend the next 30 minutes looking for it on the floor. I think I opened it up too far. I think we're on there. Uh, yeah, I pinched it back shut with some pliers just to tighten it up. And uh, it's snapped on and it feels pretty snug. All right, you can see how low profile that is there by going with a snap ring instead of a fastener in the end. I think we're, we're probably only proud of the actual face back here by, well, let's measure it. Yeah, so we're only 1.16 millimeters proud of this back face here. We would, never would have been able to do that with a fastener back here, but by going with the snap ring and the groove there on the handle, uh, this will still be removable should I ever need to actually service this thing, but I think we'll have plenty of clearance to the front of this vise. Let's try it. Oh, that is nice. Wow, what a difference. Yeah, I can go from pretty much almost all the way closed to all the way open in seconds in comparison to the old way. And that spins on there really, really nice. Well guys, I think we're done. I am really happy with the result that we have here. And if you wanna make one of these for yourself, uh, as always, the STLs for everything that we do on this channel are available 100% free. They are on my site, fpfdesigns.com, and I'll link that down in the description of this video.
Guys, as always, thanks for hanging out in the shop with me for this week's video. If you enjoyed this at all, if there's anything you got out of this, do me a favor, take a second, hit that like button. And if this is your first time on the channel, we do a new video like this every single Friday. It's always a functional print, not always out here in the shop. Um, I do in the shop, outside, around the house, all sorts of stuff, even electronics projects. If you're into that sort of thing, check out some of the other videos on the channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. And guys, if you do, I'll see you next Friday.